Hey everyone, this is Jackie, and in this video we'll learn how to construct scientific arguments using specific modes of reasoning. This will include defining descriptive, relational, linear causal, and multi-component causal reasoning, identifying the mode of reasoning within an argument, and lastly constructing an argument using a specific mode of reasoning. When we reason within an argument, we're describing how evidence supports a claim using our knowledge of scientific concepts and principles. But there are many different ways to reason within an argument. For example, how would you distinguish between these three arguments to the question listed at the top of the slide here? Do humans contribute to global warming? Why? The first argument, yes, humans generate CO2. The second argument, yes, humans contribute to global warming by generating CO2. The third argument, yes, humans contribute to global warming by generating CO2 through activities such as industrial farming. CO2 is a greenhouse gas that causes global warming by trapping heat in the Earth's atmosphere. Though all three of these statements are arguing for essentially the same claim, using the same evidence, how they're structured is different. This is where the modes of reasoning comes in, which will help us distinguish between arguments structurally. In this video, we'll be looking at four distinct modes of reasoning. To help us understand each mode of reasoning a bit better, we'll be using this question about climate change as a way to look at different arguments at each mode of reasoning. The first mode of reasoning is called descriptive reasoning. In descriptive reasoning, the claim and evidence are described, but there isn't a link, such as because or so, that describes the relationship between the two of them. An example of a descriptive argument to the question above might be, yes, humans generate CO2 through activities such as driving fossil fuel cars. In this case, yes is the claim, and humans generating CO2 through activities such as driving fossil fuel cars is the evidence. However, there isn't a linking word between them like because or so that connects the two. The second mode of reasoning we'll talk about is called relational reasoning. In relational reasoning, the claim and evidence are described, and this time there's a link between them that connects the two. However, there are no statements that describe why the evidence is relevant to and or supports the claim. Here's an example of an argument that exhibits relational reasoning. Yes, humans contribute to global warming by generating CO2 through activities such as driving fossil fuel cars. In this case, we have a claim, yes, humans contribute to global warming, some evidence generating CO2 through activities such as driving fossil fuel cars, and the claim and the evidence are connected by a word, by, establishing a connection between those two ideas. The third mode of reasoning is called linear causal reasoning. In linear causal reasoning, the claim and evidence are described and a link between them is established. The link is then justified by providing additional causal statements that describe why the evidence supports the claim. Here's an example of an argument that exhibits linear causal reasoning. Yes, humans contribute to global warming by generating CO2 through activities such as driving fossil fuel cars. CO2 is a greenhouse gas that causes global warming by trapping heat in the Earth's atmosphere. In this case, we have our claim, yes, humans contribute to global warming, connected to our evidence generating CO2 through activities such as driving fossil fuel cars, through a link by. Some additional causal statements to justify this link are provided at the end of this argument. CO2 is a greenhouse gas that causes global warming by trapping heat in the Earth's atmosphere. In this case, the additional causal statement allows us to understand how and why greenhouse gases like CO2 cause global warming. The fourth and final mode of reasoning we'll talk about is called multi-component causal reasoning. In linear causal reasoning, we're using one piece of evidence to justify a claim. In multi-component causal reasoning, we're using multiple pieces of evidence to contribute to explaining the claim. Some may point in the same direction, while sometimes the evidence is competing and needs to be carefully evaluated to understand which aspects contribute more or less to the full picture. Here's an example of an argument that exhibits multi-component causal reasoning. Yes, humans contribute to global warming by generating CO2 through activities such as driving fossil fuel cars. CO2 is a greenhouse gas that causes global warming by trapping heat in the Earth's atmosphere. Humans also contribute to global warming by generating CH4, methane, during industrial farming practices. Methane is another greenhouse gas that traps heat in the Earth's atmosphere. So in this case, what we're seeing is we have two chains of linear causal reasoning coming together to explain our single claim, humans contribute to global warming. Just like with granularity, not all tasks require causal reasoning all the time. Depending on the task, descriptive or relational reasoning might be absolutely fine for what you're doing. Ideally, on an exam or quiz, you'll be given information that tells you what mode of reasoning is expected in your argument. All right, let's practice some of the things we've talked about. What we're going to do is show you some arguments to the following question. Which direction of the equilibrium will be favored? Justify your choice with reference to PKA values. For each argument, what we want you to do is pause the video and identify the mode of reasoning used in the argument. Once you're ready, you can unpause the video and we'll explain the answer. Argument 1. The equilibrium will favor the reactants. The PKA value of H2O is lower than the PKA of the alkyne, indicating that the alkyne is a more stable acid than water. 
equilibria favor the side of the more stable acid. Pause the video now and decide what mode of reasoning is being exhibited in this argument. This is a linear causal argument. Our claim, the equilibrium will favor the reactants, is connected to some evidence about pKa values and the stability of acids. The reasoning is causal because it describes how and why stability is linked to the direction of equilibria. Argument 2. The equilibrium will favor the reactants because the pKa of water is lower than the pKa of the alkyne. Pause the video now and decide on what mode of reasoning is being exhibited in this argument. This is a relational argument. In this case, the claim and evidence are provided and linked, but there aren't any additional statements that explain why the claim and evidence are connected. Argument 3, our last one. Reactants. The pKa of H2O is lower than the pKa of the alkyne. Pause the video now and decide on what mode of reasoning is being exhibited in this argument. This is a descriptive argument. The claim and evidence are being described, but there aren't any links that connect the two, such as through words like because or so. Let's try another example. Will the following equilibrium favor reactants or products? Justify your answer with reference to the chemical properties of the conjugate bases in a multi-component causal argument. You can pause the video now and take some time to write out your answer, and when you're ready, you can unpause and we can discuss our answers. Here's the answer I came up with. First, sulfur is a larger atom than oxygen. Larger atoms are better able to disperse electron density and stabilize negative charge, which suggests that the reactants are favored. Second, the base's negative charge is delocalized across multiple atoms, while the conjugate base's negative charge is not delocalized. Resonance stabilizes molecules by dispersing electron density, so this further supports the claim that reactants are favored. Note that in this case, even though oxygen is more electronegative than sulfur, the experimental evidence in the pKa values tell us that atomic size is the dominant factor when comparing atoms in the same column of the periodic table, while electronegativity would dominate across a row. Let's summarize what we did today. In this video, you learned about four modes of reasoning, descriptive, relational, linear causal, and multi-component causal, including how to identify the different modes of reasoning within arguments, as well as constructing arguments of your own with a specific mode of reasoning. Remember, no mode of reasoning is inherently better than any of the others. It all depends on the task that you're expected to complete. Ideally, on an exam or quiz, the reasoning expected of you is going to be clear within the question itself. If you want more practice with some of the skills we talked about today, check out the problem set linked in the description of this video. I'll see you next time.